pawn sound. this morning in Father's house, in the house of prayer, for it is our, the Lord's house. We come to worship Him this morning. In Psalm 27, in uh, the 14th verse, it says, wait upon the Lord. Be of good courage. We don't like to wait. I know sometimes, you wonder sometimes what color the light them people want before they move. <laughs> but we need to be patiently, And but you know, when we wait upon God, Here's what we get. And he shall give thee strength to thine heart. And don't we need that strength today in our heart and our soul? I say of the Lord, he is our strength and our help this morning. And that's why we can come before him this morning in his house of prayer and in his house to worship him in spirit and truth. And you know, that's what it's all about. To be gathered together in the house of the Lord. And to worship our Savior, for He is ours and what He's done for us. His redemption, His grace and mercy, for His healing touch. God is our healer, our performer. He is our strength, as it said. Let us stand this morning, just a few minutes in His presence, and wait into the Lord. Father, we're waiting for Your Spirit, Spirit of God. It's not by might, not by power, but by Thy Spirit. Save the Lord. Spirit of the living God. Moving in our hearts. Oh, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Lord, we're so thankful this morning that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. We lift our eyes unto you because you are coming and coming again. And we know that 
Oh, Father, that we can put our confidence in you. And Father, we ask your anointing upon everything that's said and done for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. And as Mike continues, the lead us in worship this morning. God bless you. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just thought I'd ask. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Three of you got it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. so. Okay. You get that twice. You get to do that twice. Can you do that? Yes. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Mr. Pauly. The first service was kind of debacle for Mike. <laughs> but you know, after I went and sat down, Roy came up to us and gave us a word of encouragement. You'll never know what that meant. I was I was really down. Smile on my face. But I was down. <laughs> Thank you. Leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought, O oh, words with heavenly comfort from whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me. I
or a friend insisted that we come? Or are we a spectator today or are we a participant? It's up to you. Did we come with the attitudes of bless me if you can? Maybe we came just to nitpick and complain. That happens. Hopefully, we came to worship God. And this is true. If this is true, we can truthfully sing this song, I Came to Worship You. I came to worship you.
Lord, we praise you this morning. We just continue right now in this time in our service of prayer where we just give you praise and honor and glory. We just stand here in your presence right now, asking the Holy Spirit to continue to move upon us. Have your way, Lord, in this service. Have your way right now in this time of prayer, Father. Lord, we ask that you would examine our hearts in the hidden places, that you would see where no one else is able to see or understand. You know the pain that we may carry, the burdens and the cares that we carry in this world, but yet we know that our freedom is in you. We ask God your healing grace that would cover every place, every wound, every heartache, that you are able to do far more than we could ever even think or imagine. And we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that acts on behalf of your children as we reach out to you this morning and know that you are restoring and redeeming every place of difficulty, every battle for your greater glory. And we thank you that we never, there's no waste in our suffering and pain, that you use it all. And so we submit ourselves unto you today as we enter into this time of praying for healing and needs that we have, we just pause for a moment and just say thank you, Jesus, that we can come before you. We say praise you, Jesus, that we can come before you and that you hear our prayers and we think of the words where your word says um, that you are at the right hand of the Father ever interceding for us. May we just pause and think of what an amazing thought that is and how we worship you this morning, God. We thank you, Jesus, that your sacrifice for us that gives us eternal life, but it also gives us victory and power on the earth through your Holy Spirit that you've left with us. And so we just say, Lord, today, that as we bring this request before you, that if there's any um, disbelief, doubt, or anything that's a blockage, any unforgiveness or bitterness or anything at all that would block us from receiving our healing this morning, we ask that it we just ask you search our hearts and that we would release it right now unto you. We ask your forgiveness. Refresh us right now, God, as we come before you for these prayer requests for healing. And this is a time where we're going to ask our elders to come forward. If you have a healing, a need, if you're online or you're here with us today, uh, we're going to come into agreement for some things. And not just things for the church, but we have some major things happening in the world. And we, uh, that, hurt, that hurts our hearts when we hear certain news of people being persecuted. We're also going to come into agreement for some of these things. So um, first I wanted to give one quick praise report for our dear friend Carol here. She had a grandson that was six years old, has a grandson six years old named Noah. We got a call yesterday morning for an intercession for him. He was in the hospital and having difficulty breathing and they weren't quite sure what it was. And... Um, the Lord heard the prayers, and he was released from the hospital. So glory to God. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord, for those answered prayers and how it encourages us when we get those answered prayers. If you have a need as we're praying, and we also spark to my attention that all the needs on, in your bulletin that are listed here, we're going to come into agreement for those as well. But if you want to step forward, if you have a healing for yourself or for someone you'd want to intercede for today, please come forward. And also we're praying with the people who are online. So as we come together, first Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you are with us today. It's your spirit is surely here. And we just uh, lift up to you uh, Charles McGill's sister Wilma, whose lung has collapsed and that she was um, put into a coma. We ask God that as she's in that state, that you would come in and visit her, give her a visitation, Lord. Let your angelic host hover over her in the room that she is right now. We send it forth in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift up Afghanistan to you also, God. What's going on there is just absolutely heartbreaking, Lord. 
It just hurts our hearts, God, when we think of the people that are under this tremendous evil and persecution. There's things on this side of heaven we absolutely don't understand, but we trust you in faith, knowing that, God, that you see it all, you know it all, nothing took you by surprise, that you are at work. We ask God to strengthen our military during this time, that we come into agreement, Father, for the military, their family members, and we just ask, Lord, that you strengthen them and encourage them as they stand in the forefront um, to protect this nation and as they intervene for other situations around the world. And we just thank you for them, God. We speak for the peace of Jerusalem, Lord, this morning, and we ask that you continue to uh, surround your the apple of your eye, Jerusalem, around about as the enemies of Jerusalem always have lined up around her, but we see that escalating today. We put this in your very capable hands and we ask God that just the peace uh, be surrounded. We put a firewall of protection round about that territory in the mighty name of Jesus, and we thank you for it. I put out a prayer for our dear sister Lori this morning who was at home and who's still struggling with her illness. Strengthen her, God, refresh her body in the mighty name of Jesus. Our dear friend Rose that is still at home sick today as well. We ask God that you continue to move and strengthen them by your mighty power. You are a miracle working God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We come into accordance with your word and we know that you are still doing miracles. We ask for your healing virtue and touch to be upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you every prayer request on this list right now, and the ones that are unspoken and unknown that are in the hearts of everybody here. We ask, Lord, that you touch us in the places we need to be touched, and we thank you and praise you for it. We ask that you anoint this service this morning. Move, Holy Spirit, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. top of the morning to you. Everybody in a good mood? If you're not, you're at the right place. What a great offering of, of musical praise that you gave today. And I love it that uh, God's given everyone a voice, a perfect voice for singing praise. I don't have my amen banner here. But I'm missing it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, just let me tell you this before I go on. In behalf of Liz Gagne and Dorothy Slaybaugh, who have experienced a home going for their mates, who want to do their favorite song. Because he lives, I can face singing in. <laughs> it works. <laughs> this will be the uh, final service for Sarah Hedgecock. And honey, we're going to be missing you. Put your hand up so everybody knows where you're sitting. We love you, Sarah. What a precious lady. Precious lady. We're going to be missing you. And we pray you'll miss us. She'll be tuning in, right? Yes. Privilege today for Jan and I to have uh, longtime friends here today. Uh, the Heart Sox, Gary and Donna Heart Sox. Stand up so I want to brag on you. Stand up real quick so they know who you are. All the way from Illinois. I grew up all my life across the street from the Heart Sox. And what a wonderful family they are. And, uh, I have some wonderful memories of the times we shared together. Cowboys and Indians, <laughs> bikes, mopeds, yeah. trouble, <laughs> no, picnics in the woods, all kinds of stuff. And so I'm glad to have you two here today. Thank you for coming so much. Uh, what a surprise it was. And also, um, 
Kevin has a friend that's here today and want him to introduce his friend. Stand up, Kevin. You know Kevin? <laughs> introduce your friend today. Now, you've been writing, right? Yeah, this is Troy Anderson. Troy and I go way back uh, several years. We met at Charisma when he was the chief editor of Charisma Magazine. And Troy now writes for Reuters and Christianity Today and several publications. He's written, he's an Emmy nominated award winning author or Pulitzer Prize nominated author. And he's written two books called The Babylon Code and Trumpocalypse, which we highlighted the, uh, the return in there. And then we also, you just finished, uh, tell us about the last book. And then the book we're writing is called 1159, The Midnight Hour. And so we have been. Uh, writing all week into the midnight hours every single night, including last night. And this week we have, uh, uh, we had some interruptions because of Afghanistan. So just pray for those people in Afghanistan. Uh, we were at GSA, our ministry was working with the generals and people in DC for, we were able to procure seven C-130 planes in the UAE to begin to go in today, hopefully and help extract some people. So we have about, 8,000 people we're trying to extract and be in prayer that we're able to continue to coordinate these efforts uh, by the hand of God. And there's some terrible reports coming out of Afghanistan. Uh, but uh, Troy, say a word to the people here this morning, would you? Well, well it's a great honor to be here. Uh, I've heard all kinds of amazing things about this church and, and Pastor Phil, and uh, we just put him in the book last night. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yeah, just uh, wonderful to be here and great, great to meet everybody. It uh, reminds me of the church I grew up in, the little town in Oregon, with singing those songs, little oh, yeah. Assemblies of God Church, uh, Port, Port Orford, little town in the south coast. So wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Our honor. Thanks for coming. Here. Wow. Awesome. We talk a lot and emphasis about uh, tithes and offerings, and, but the offering you've given in music is wonderful, but a lot of times tithe we think about money, but the greatest attribute you have is your time. And by making your body get up out of bed and come to church, you are tithing back a very important time. So what a way to start the week. I'm glad that you're here today. Thanks for coming. We have some of our people that uh, can't stay home very much, and they're always on the run. So th we have some friends that are up in Pennsylvania right now, and uh, that's Randy Kemper and Bob Parker, and these guys want to show off what they're eating up there as a double thumbs up dessert. Thanks to them making me hungry just looking at it, you know? But the whole gang is more to them than that. There's the Kemper's over on the left, and then Bob Parker and, and Janet to the right, and then uh, Ron and Kathy Wheatley in the middle. He's Ron sitting down. What? Uh, Ross, what did I say, Don? Ross, of course. They're probably watching right now. Please forgive me. Will you? <laughs> and then Pastor Larry Hale and Luella uh, standing there in the middle. So we're, we miss them, but they're having a big time without us. <laughs> uh, I want to uh, remind you that every Thursday between 9 and 11, we do have a work day. And a, a lot of things happen in here from cleaning the inside to the outside. We've got an inside crew and an outside crew. There's some of the, the ones that were in, inside cleaning up. It's Lorraine and Judy and Frida and Marla and now Charlie. I didn't get the names mixed up. It's Charlie, then Bobby. It's not Bobby and Charlie. Anyway, that's, that's them. And then of course uh, we got, uh, they captured Bobby uh, with his mop and glow down there. <laughs> there you go. Also there, there are some uh, on-call people as well. You know, a couple weeks ago we were asking, we said we need some people to come in here. Well, you begin to respond well, and so thank you for that crew, but also we have Hallie and Ira and, and Lynn and Julie all ready to come at the minute's notice. We appreciate that. Also outside, we've got the branch manager, which yeah. is Frank Monk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he applauds for himself. And then we have, of course, Doug and, and Rick that are all work outside. And then uh, Larry Carpenter went and mowed the whole grass. And so I appreciate all those things that happened to keep the house of God not only looking good, but safe and uh, a good place to be. Also, uh, I wanted to make mention to you, I got a, a, an email from a little uh, Barb Winter who watches by live stream. 
And she began to talk about, uh, I guess she heard me last week saying that the gondolier had been such a, a friend of Harvest Chapel for so many years, and then they got sold out by another company, and so they fired everybody. And, uh, and then they started making some changes, and they didn't want uh, any of the uh, articles that Deasy was sending in anymore. And uh, they basically were only uh, telling about the Jewish synagogue and about the Buddhist church and every now and then a local pastor for some quick note. But I've got good news for you today. They saw the light. And so <laughs> they have changed. They brought the old editor back again. And they have said, we need help to rescue the religious page. And so they're asking the, the Christian churches in town to respond. And so if, if uh, I know some people that cancel the gondolier because of what they had done, but uh, they finally got the message. And so you can uh, count on them again to uh, uh, receive. They said, we're anxious to see Deasy's articles come back again. So Deasy, thank you for all the work that you do. I just want to remind you too that uh, uh, check out our website. If you want to introduce somebody to Harvest Chapel, Look at uh, the website, it tells you who we are, what we are, what we believe, and all the things that are happening here. And you'll check it out, you'll find, maybe find even your picture on there without your permission. So there you go. <laughs> right now, Lorraine's going to come and tell us other things that are happening at Harvest Chapel. Lorraine? Good morning, everybody. So nice to see everybody here today. And for everyone on live stream, we, we hope that you can see us okay. And we miss you, we love you, and hope to see you again soon. If the usher would please come forward, this is a, a time where we ask anyone who is here for the first time to please raise their hand because we have a little gift that we would like to give you. Don't be shy. It's a good little, little present, so raise your hand. Good, good, okay. Now, we have a visitor's packet for you. Well, you can tell them about that, right? Yeah. Oh, no, Ryan, sorry. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> um, if you do uh, get a card and you want to write anything on one of the envelopes that we have in front of you, a little request for something, you can fill that out and put it in the offering uh, treasure chest down there. We have some birthdays this week, today is Rita Matney's birthday. Happy birthday <clears throat> to Rita. August 24th is, oh my goodness. August 24th is Don Mendenhall. Happy birthday, Don. A year younger. 39 and holding, yeah. <clears throat> August 25th, we have Rebecca Hartung. We hope she is watching us from home. August 26th, Perry Sears. Happy birthday, Perry. 95. <laughs> okay. We have some anniversaries this week. On August 25th, we have Dave and Angela Sinclair. So we wish them a very happy anniversary. And on August 26th, we have Frank and Francis D'Antonio. Right there. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Our women's prayer group led by Darlene Tintori will meet every Thursday morning at 10.30 a.m. here at Harvest Chapel. Be sure to mark your calendars for this powerful time to pray. Share the word led by Sue Mark is every Wednesday afternoon from 3 to 4 p.m. We invite anyone who would like to just sit in the presence of the Lord to come on Wednesday from 4 to 4.30 p.m., 30 minutes to be refreshed in your own spirit with the Lord one-on-one. -on -one. We want to thank you for your faithfulness and giving and pray for God's blessings to be upon each of you. If you're watching via live stream, we have made it possible to give online and the information is on the overhead, so please make note of that. <clears throat> this is just a reminder of Pastor's two books out on the table in the lobby. One is called The Good Word from God's Word Today. It's great. It's a daily devotional, but it, it's like one minute with God. It's so wonderful. Please pick one up. 
And he also has uh, another life story of his, which is entitled, Don't Quit Now. Oh, you've got to read this book if you haven't already. It's his story. It's amazing. Both books are fundraisers for Harvest Chapel, and they're available in the lobby and for a gift offering. And there's a little sheet on there that explains how much uh, each costs. Next Sunday morning, Reverend Kevin Jessup, who right here, will be bringing us an update on his international ministry and the word. God is using Kevin in many, many ways. Next Sunday evening, starting at six o'clock, Kevin and Donna will continue their series on revealing the word. This is a powerful teaching and you will be blessed. The beautiful flowers that you see behind us uh, in the, in the um, altar are from Glenn Slaybog and uh, his memorial that, they, that we had here. Those were the flowers that were here and they left them for us, isn't that beautiful? May God bless you all as we continue to share the love of Christ here at Harvest Chapel. God bless you, thank you, I'll see you next week. Before I read the scripture, I just want Miss Lori Burmeister to know that I was standing in for her prayer today, not myself. The reading is Psalm 66, 1 to 10, and verses 16 to 20. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name, give to him glorious praise, say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you, they sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. They passed through the river on foot. There we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. And now verses 16 to 20. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word and to all of you. Well, for six months out of the year, I call Don Mendenhall brother. We're the same age for six months out of the year. We're the same age, so I call him brother. But on Tuesday, when he has his birthday, for the next six months, I'll call him dad. Because <laughs> he's older than me. That's right. Not yet. <laughs> anyway, uh, I cherish friends. I'm a collector of friends. And just because a friend isn't uh, everything I think they should be or vice versa, I don't throw them away. I keep friends. That's the richest person in the world. It's not money, it's about having friends. And uh, Roy and Amy Pauley, been long time, long time friends. And I cherish their friendship and uh, thank them for the ministry that they've given to the Lord. So would you welcome all the way from Orlando, Roy and Amy Pauley, come on. I'm going to 
Lord had done for me. I told everybody, I have set my spirit free. I thought to myself, I'd keep it quiet, but it hold it all day. Hold on, I don't want to tell everybody what the Lord has done for me. The preacher was preaching how the Lord could set me free. He said, come on, you sinners, and he pointed his finger at me. I ran down to the altar, the tears began to flow. I begged the Lord for mercy, that's when he saved my soul. And then I told everybody what the Lord had done for me. I told everybody how he set my spirit free. I thought to myself, I'd keep it quiet, but I told it all day. Told it all night, I would tell everybody what the Lord has done for me. I got up from the altar, I was feeling light as air. I didn't even have a worry, I didn't even have a care. I felt the Holy Spirit, my soul was free from sin. I knew the very moment when the love of God came in, and then I told everybody what the Lord had done for me. Yes, I told everybody how he set my spirit free. I thought to myself, I'd keep it quiet, but I told it all day. Told all night, I want to tell everybody what the Lord has done for me. Well, I told everybody what the Lord had done for me. Yes, I told everybody how to set my spirit free. I thought to myself, I'd keep it quiet, but I told it all day. Told all night, I want to tell everybody what the Lord has done for me.
sing that powerful, powerful song that Brother Phil wrote. Now I want you to listen to this great, great message as the thief on the cross speaks to us throughout this entire number. Remember me. Listen. Kind of 
you know, your mule and go on down the town. You know. <laughs> but there's nothing like the old games. They just kind of hit you right between the eyes with a straightforward message that lets you know that God is real on a personal basis. And I hope every person here can say along with me and the writer of this grand old number, I have anchored my soul in the hate of grace.
say, my, you're a good singer. his love to us in many different ways. First of all, why does he love us? Well, to begin with, he made you. He made you. And when you make something, you take a special interest in that thing, don't you? You love it. He made you and he loves you. Now I want you to think about this. One way that he demonstrates his love to us is through nature. Have you thought about that? Here in Florida, we're blessed. I told the folks this morning that a fellow said, I heard one fellow say that when God made Florida, he was having a good day. <laughs> yes, sir. But he demonstrates his love to us through nature. God's love is written in the nature of the Bud that opens in the trees, in the forest, the great pines and oaks, and the beautiful sunset. Have you ever been on the beach at sunset here in Florida? We did that not long ago. And at sunset, my old sky was so beautiful as the sun met the water. My, it was breathtaking. God speaks to us and shows his love to us through nature. Next, he expresses his love to us by supplying our every daily need. I dare say that there's not one person here this morning that wants for any of the necessities of life. God is good. He has blessed us. And he's good all the time. He demonstrates his great love to us by his willingness to forgive. Isn't forgiveness a wonderful thing? I'll tell you, I would be lost as lost could be without the forgiving power of Jesus. Amen. We all would be. And I think of that great verse, a familiar verse, 1 John, I will have you turn to all these 
but you can write it down. First John, the first chapter, verse 9, a familiar verse to all of us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that wonderful? And when I think of the forgiveness of God and the forgiving power of Jesus, I think of the one. You remember the story there in Luke, the seventh chapter. Simon, the Pharisee, decided to invite Jesus home for a meal. Do you remember that story? And a young lady burst through the crowd, burst into the room, and ran up to the feet of Jesus and fell at his feet and began to worship him. And Jesus looked at that lady. She was a sinner. She was a prostitute. And God, Jesus looked at her with eyes of love and compassion. And Jesus said to Simon and the others that were there, Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins are forgiven. Her sins, which were many, are forgiven. Forgiveness is a wonderful thing. And what about that thief on the cross that he wrote about and that we sang about? He looked to Jesus and dared to recognize the great divinity of God's only begotten Son. And he looked to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what did Jesus do? Did Jesus say, no, you're a terrible sinner. I can never forgive you. Is that what Jesus said? No. Jesus looked at old boy with eyes of compassion. And he said these words. I say unto you today, you will be with me in paradise. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't forgiveness a wonderful thing? Well, next, why did Jesus, why does God love us? Why does he love us so much? And here's the answer in 1 John, verse 4, or chapter 4 and verse 16. 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 16. It's a short verse. But it says so much. Here's why he loves us. And the verse reads like this. Three words. God is love. That says it all, doesn't it? God is love. He can't help but love you. He can't do anything. He's not capable of doing anything else but loving you. Did you know that he loves you personally today? And when you read this verse, this next verse I have written here is the most familiar verse of all. John 3.16, if we ever get tired of hearing John 3.16, shame on us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. There may be some folks here this morning, and maybe you feel like no one cares for you. Maybe you're lonely. Maybe you're discouraged. And you think, no one loves me, no one cares. There's one who loves you with an everlasting unfailing love, and that is a God. He loves you this morning. Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, verse 3. The Lord showed himself unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Everlasting love. Love that never fails. He will never let you down. He will never disappoint you. But he loves you. Yeah. 
and sure as Jesus was on the boat with those disciples when the storm came. He is in your boat today, and no matter what you're going through, he is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. He will never disappoint you. And sure, as he was in the lion's den with old Daniel, he is with you today. And here is a great verse. Psalm 46. And I forget just exactly the verses. But it reads like this. God is our refuge and strength. Though the mountains would fall into the sea. <coughs> though the mountains should shake. I will put my faith in God, knowing, listen, knowing that he loves me. Another psalm goes like this. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength. In whom will I trust? In him will I trust. Why? Because I know without a doubt he loves me. And as we begin to wind down, I want you to listen to this. Talking about the great love of God. There's a verse in the 8th chapter of the book of Romans that goes something like this. For I am persuaded that life, nor death, nor principalities, or anything, nothing, can separate me from the great love of God. I'll tell you, we need to think more about the great love of God. We need to preach it. Now, I know he preaches it. I know that. Some churches are not preaching it the way they should. And I know this for a fact. Some churches, as they prepare to accept folks into the church fellowship and membership, and I know this for a fact because I've seen it. They have a little card, and one by one they go down the list of do's and don'ts. Not so much necessarily about the love of God, but do you agree to do this? Do you agree not to do this right down the line? There's a word for that. Do you know what that word is? Legalism. I'll tell you, we need to preach more about the love of Jesus. And if those people would do that, they would win a hundred people to the Lord where they're now winning maybe one or two. I'll tell you, the love of God, the message of his love is powerful. And it changes lives. And one example I heard Oh, some years ago, a preacher told about a young boy in his teens. He got in trouble with the law. And it was in jail, out of jail, in jail, out of jail. Till he was 60-some years old. And he got out of jail. This time, with no friends, no family who would claim him because of his character. And he began to despair. He was on the verge of taking his own life. And somehow or another, he became connected to a Christian gentleman that began to tell him about the love of God. And uh, I want us to do a song here in a moment. I want you to play, babe. And this man began to talk to this gentleman that was deep in despair and discouraged. And he began to talk to him about the love of God. 
And the fact that God loved him so much that he died on the cross and that he was willing no matter what his past was, he was willing to forgive him and give him a new life. And that man accepted the Lord. He accepted Christ and went on to be a great, powerful soul winner for the Lord Jesus. I'll tell you, friends, the message of God's love is powerful. It's life-changing. And there may be someone here today, and maybe you're a little bit discouraged, maybe you're a little bit down, and there could be someone here, and maybe you have not fully accepted the invitation that Christ extends to you Come unto me, all oh, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Why does he promise this? Why does he say that? Only one reason. He loves you. He loves you. I'm going to extend the call to you today. It's almost noon. And I promise to let you out by 12 o'clock. But there are some needs represented here today. Some of you are hurting. Some of you are sick and maybe not feeling so hot. I want to pray for you. Some of you are praying for a lost loved one. We would like to remember them today too. So whatever your need is, Maybe someone here who would like to say yes to the pleadings of the Holy Spirit. Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me. And he will do just that. How many with me? Even if you're raising your hand in place of someone else that you're praying for. How many would lift a hand to heaven with me and say, Lord, I have a need. And Brother Roy, when you pray this prayer, pray for me. Raise your hands all over, all over. If you don't have any needs, don't raise your hand. If everything is perfect, keep your hands down. But if you have a need, one more time, raise your hands to heaven. Would you stand to your feet? I want us to sing this little chorus. There's room at the cross for you. And here's what I'd like for us to do. As we sing it, if you raise your hand, I'm going to ask you to come and stand here in the front. You can kneel if you would like. But I'm going to ask you at least to come and stand here and allow me to have a prayer with you as we close the service. God is here ready to meet your need. If you raise your hand, come as we sing. There's room at the cross for you. There's room. There's room at the cross for you. No millions have come. No
Maybe we are worthy because you made us and you love us and we're so grateful. We thank you for this church, for this church family, for Pastor Phil and Jan. I pray you will continue to hide them behind the cross as they continue to shepherd the flock. pray with me and we will as we close today father we just thank you for the reminder of how much you love us it's so amazing that you are love and that you are mindful of us as who are we 
that you would think of us in such a way. And so we are so humbled by that thought. I pray as we leave today that you will continue to resonate that word love in our spirits and that we would show that love to others, that they would be drawn to you for the glory of God as we are dismissed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.